My name is Ryan Heinzman. I'm a Geography PhD student at Arizona State University. The Big Island is a special place for physical geographers to study. There exists such a wide range of climate zones, all while the geology of basalt lava rock stays pretty constant across the island. Geographers have done research on topics from coastal erosion to plant succession to the incision of stream valleys using the varieties of these conditions found on the Big Island. Let's get started. of five shield volcanoes, Kohala, Mauna Loa, Hualalai, Mauna Kea, and Kilauea. The reason that they're called shield volcanoes is because of their similarity to a shield that would be used in battle with broad, wide slopes. Most eruptions from these volcanoes form from rift zones where the volcano is actually splitting apart. These rift zones are most obvious on Mauna Loa and Kilauea. In these volcanic regions, the landscape is defined by these rift zones, as well as volcanic craters, which are shaped by eruption and collapse. The Hawaiian Islands sit in the middle of the Pacific Plate, whereas most volcanic activity is associated with divergent and convergent plate boundaries, the Hawaiian Islands sit in the middle of a hot spot located in the mantle. The Pacific Plate has been moving over this hot spot for tens of millions of years, producing the Emperor Chain and the Hawaiian Chain. The volcanoes on the Big Island of Hawaii are either in the shield or the post-shield stage, or in a transition between the two. They're all too young to be in the rejuvenated stage. The shield stage is the building of about 90% of the volcano. It's characterized by a lot of eruptions of highly fluid basalt lava. This lava is typically going to be erupted from the volcano's summit and from rift zones. Most shield volcanoes also have or have had a summit caldera. Meanwhile, when a volcano reaches the post-shield stage, about 1% of the volume comes from a thin veneer capping of the shield volcano. This stage is characterized by eruptions that are less frequent, stickier lava, and thicker and shorter eruptions that are more violent with cinder cones. As a result, the post-shield stage commonly forms a bumpy, steeper-sided cap on the shield volcanoes. All of the Big Island volcanoes have the gentle slopes of a shield volcano. However, given enough time and precipitation, these gentle slopes will undergo rock decay that allows for the development of deep river valleys. These valleys grow headward into the shield volcano, where waterfalls can cascade into them. They also grow through landsliding the cause of some of these massive landslide events are not exactly known. It probably has to do something with the structural weakness along the sides of the volcano, or it could be associated with earthquakes. Particularly on the Big Island, the Kohala volcano to the north, which is one of the older volcanoes on the island, had a large landslide that is visible from the coastline, with sheer cliffs extending down to the ocean where the land slumped down into the sea. It may be hard to believe that the Big Island at one point had glaciers on top of its highest peaks. This occurred several times over the last 200,000 years. You can see hints of this glacial past on the Big Island by looking at the subtle color differences caused by glacial deposition. The reason behind this color difference is due to something called silica glaze, which is about the thickness of a human hair, but makes a big difference on the appearance of landforms on the Big Island. Silica glaze coats all of the rocks in Hawaii, and it even changes the color of fresh lava flows, turning them lighter brown. On the top of Mauna Kea, it turns the glacial boulders white. A view from the International Space Station gives you an idea of this coloration on the top of Mauna Kea. You can clearly see the lighter color caused by the exposure of rocks after the re most recent glaciation, and how it flowed around cinder cones. The climate of Hawaii is defined primarily by its latitude and its proximity to the ocean. This means that there isn't too much of a seasonal fluctuation throughout the year. Because Hawaii is surrounded by more than 2,000 miles of ocean on either side, the air that reaches it spends a lot of time over the ocean. 
This means that the air around Hawaii doesn't fluctuate much either because oceans regulate temperature. During much of the year, a large ridge of high pressure is situated northeast of the islands of Hawaii. This subtropical ridge causes winds to blow consistently from the northeast, especially during the summer. These are called the trade winds and are a primary factor in determining the climate of different areas on the Big Island. These trade winds are usually between 10 to 20 miles per hour and cause air to rise up on the windward side of the island. During the winter though, migratory mid-latitude storms interrupt the subtropical trade wind pattern and result in an atmospheric flow from the south or southwest. These are called the Kona winds and bring widespread precipitation to much of the island. While the Big Island is definitely influenced by the trade winds in the summer and the Kona winds in the winter, sea and land breezes caused by the complex topography of the island can occur on sheltered sections of the leeward coasts, such as around Kona in Hawaii. These winds are driven by the land-sea temperature gradient, where during the day the land heats up, causing air to flow in from the ocean, up the slopes, condensing and forming clouds and rain. During the nighttime, the wind flows back out to the sea. This zone is home to the farms that produce the world-famous Kona coffee. Over the ocean around Hawaii, rainfall averages between 25 and 30 inches a year. However, the island can receive as much as 15 times that amount in some places, and less than a third of that amount in others. This intense variability is caused primarily by the orographic or mountain influence of the island. The mountains obstruct, deflect, and accelerate the flow of air. When warm, moist air from the ocean on the windward side rises over the coasts and slopes of the mountains, clouds and rain occur. Leeward areas, however, where the air descends down the mountain, warming up and compressing, tend to remain sunny and dry. An incredible example of this rain shadow is shown on the Kohala volcano on the northern end of the Big Island. You can see on the eastern side, where trade winds are more predominant, you have much greener vegetation. As the air rises up the side of the Kohala volcano, it cools down and causes to clouds and precipitation. But on the western side, you can clearly see as that air descends over the Kohala volcano, it warms up, dries out, and causes much more arid conditions. An interesting thing that you can look at is that both sides of the Kohala volcano are pretty much the same age. However, because of the difference in precipitation on the windward versus leeward side, the valleys that have formed on the volcano look very different. These valleys are formed by the rainfall incising down the volcano. In some of those images, you may have noticed that precipitation doesn't always have a maximum value at the top of the volcanoes. The reason is because of the trade wind inversion. As the air descends back down towards the latitudes of Hawaii, it doesn't reach the surface. It only reaches an elevation between 1,800 and 2,400 meters. This descending air is where temperature increases and dew point decreases. The air is much drier where this inversion occurs. Increases in temperature with height are not conducive to rainfall. When the humid trade winds reach this inversion, it caps any clouds that will form. What this means is that the orographic effect that's so influential to the biogeography and climatology of the Big Island stops at this trade wind inversion. Biogeographers focus on plant and animal distributions, what controls them and what might happen to them in the future. There are a great many factors of what influences plant and animal distribution. One of the primary causes of biogeography distribution in the Big Island is caused by precipitation as you've seen with the rain shadow and now with the trade inversion. Because the temperatures on the Big Island are pretty constant, they're not really controlled like most other locations in the mid-latitudes. They're primarily controlled by precipitation. The trade wind inversion caps any moisture from reaching higher elevation locations throughout much of the year. This means that you see tree lines on the Big Island around where that trade wind inversion occurs. The Big Island is also a famous place for understanding plant succession. Plant succession is when you have something that comes through and disturbs the current landscape and biogeography of an area. For example, a glacier or a fire, or in the case of the Big Island, an entirely new surface might be formed because of the lava flows. The Big Island's plant cover ranges from tropical rainforest on the eastern sides 
to desert scrub vegetation on the rain shadow side. The rate that certain plants reestablish themselves on the Big Island after a lava flow takes place is going to be influenced by those climate controls that we've talked about so far. Hopefully one day you'll be able to explore the Big Island of Hawaii's countless wonders of physical geography for yourself. Thanks for watching.